We didn't think the house had made it. We didn't think it was possible because we saw the fire coming. We had about 30 minutes to gather up and go. You know, and the smoke was coming in, it was time to go. It was really windy, you know. I think they were saying 30 to 35 mile an hour sustained winds, gusting up to 45 mile an hour. I stepped outside and took one look and we were all ready, the car was packed. And I said, it's time to get the dogs in the car and get out of here. And by the time we got everybody in the car and headed down uh, Swamp Robin Road, and it was torching across the top of the road as we went out, and she could feel the heat on the side of the car as we were going out the road. It was moving that fast. Four o'clock, it broke loose. At 4.30, this place was gone. So this and the whole, it was across the highway at 4.30, 30 minutes, all the houses. So it goes fast, so be prepared. The McKinley Fire started near milepost 91 of the Parks Highway on August 17. The fire rapidly spread due to 30 to 35 mile an hour sustained winds. Over the next three days, the fire traveled 10 miles south to milepost 84 and destroyed 52 homes, three commercial structures, and over 84 outbuildings. The, the same day that the McKinley fire happened, I want to say we had eight or nine other incidents that were going on simultaneous to that. We had our hell attack crew divert, and that was a large interagency response. It was our initial attack base from forestry with local firefighters from the Willow Fire Department, which then turned into an area-wide page for all uh, fire departments in the borough to respond and, and send forces to. The McKinley wildfire was different in some of the other fires that I have fought because of maybe the ground consumption, which was really different than some of the other ones. Um, the wind-driven part of the fire was very understandable. I've seen lots of wind-driven fires, but the difference was how much ground was consumed because of the drought that we were having. So it was burned all the way down to the clay instead of just a ground level where you can get some of that moisture in. We just didn't have that moisture, so it was, everything was burning. The McKinley fire took our house, our, my truck. They said there was an evacuation notice. We never got that. We went back late that night, second night. And um, yeah, we were just blown away. We were just blown. There's hoses everywhere. I mean, there's just everywhere. There was hoses uh, left behind, and um, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> um, and it was still here. So, uh, so yeah, I do, and I do just want to say that I realize, like, we are incredibly lucky, you know, and so many people lost so much so um so yeah it you know we were really really fortunate so the forestry people would quiz me a lot like do you know why you still have a house and we would talk about that and then you know they also just brought up their safety we're working here this is our work so when we have open spaces to work in, then we can work safely, you know, and you know, and people are sending crews into places and they have to make sure that they can make it out again. You know, that's they don't need to die for our property and homes. They, you know, that's their job. And they all have people that are expecting them to come home. During the McKinley fire, there were undoubtedly some structures that had firewise improvements that were saved from the fire. Um, we, we visited some, some structures uh, in the aftermath of the fire that showed you know, good gravel landscaping, they had good water sources, they had put sprinklers up, and they had uh, reduced the flammability of their structure, and those homes survived. 
Create defensible space around your home. Move flammable vegetation and tires at least five feet from your home. Keep firewood fuel and conifer trees at least 30 feet away. Oh yeah, so defensible space, guys. I mean, we had probably 30 feet at least, but it was just, you know, the, the shrubbage. I had it down to the ground, all the shrubs. The trees, trees were gone. Uh, we had a, a couple of trees that we like to keep. There was one big birch tree we had right here, just huge. You couldn't even wrap your arms around it, you know. So we learned you need you need dirt, rock, gravel. You got to get it down to what forestry calls min mineral soil, right? Defensible space, 30 feet around your house. One, always have a go bag. Always have the important documents, deeds to your property, your titles to your vehicles, birth certificates, um, that type of important paperwork. If you have pets, be prepared. You know, you know fire season's coming. Recovery has been a slow process. Fire occurred uh, just after the middle of August, and uh, as anybody that lives in Alaska knows, that's just about toward the latter half of the building season up here. And uh, so by the time we in the McKinley Fire Long-Term Recovery Group got our ducks in a line, the building season was over. No, there's nothing. This side door where they're working, uh -huh. that's the front door. They are supposed to be building a porch today. I got part of it done. When you choose to live here, you kind of choose to do things. Um, you choose to be an independent person. You like your space. Um, and it's you can't get that everywhere, right? So you're gonna you're gonna rebuild.